right folks, this is part three of the video. In the last part, we had just configured OSPF between customer A site one, customer B site one, customer A site two, customer B site two, as well as with the provider edge routers. We also had configured VRF on provider edge two and provider edge seven. The VRS were correspondent to the actual colors here, VRF blue, VRF red, VRF blue, VRF red. And with that, we've got all our adjacencies up here. We've got a separate OSPF instance running in here, completely segmented from these ones. And now we're going to configure BGP, IBGP between these two routers. And from that point there, we're going to redistribute OSPF into BGP and BGP into OSPF. We'll have a kind of VPN thing going on and we'll be able to exchange routes dynamically between these different customer sites, advertise routes between each other without um, destabilizing the core because the core will not have these routes. They will actually be transited through the core without affecting them and everything should be up and working. So let's just get this final part of the road and see how we go. So let's move on to router two and configure our BGP. Now, if you remember from the last video, we actually configured our route distinguisher on the VRF to be 150 plus the number, so 152, 153. That denotes that the autonomous system number is going to be 150. So for this instance of BGP on both routers, we're going to use autonomous system number 150 to keep consistency. So we'll do router BGP 150. Okay. I'm going to specify our neighbor. Our neighbor is going to be, in this case, Router 7, we're going to use the loopback. And the remote AS is actually going to be the same AS because it's IBGP we're using. Okay. So now we're going to do, we'll do neighbor um, update source. It's going to be loopback 2, which is our loopback. And what we're going to do is go into address family and we're going to use VPN v4. And the next thing we're going to have to do is to put the neighbor back in. I'm going to send community, further, before we do that we need to actually activate it. So we'll do activate and we'll do neighbor 7.7.7.7 and we shall do send community extended. Okay. Let's move across to number seven. Same kind of deal. Conf T router BGP, same autonomous system number 150. We'll make the neighbor is going to be, in this case, all the twos. The remote AS is going to be the same one, 150. And our neighbor update source is going to be a loopback 7 in this case. I'm going to make the address family VPN v4. I'm going to do neighbor 2.2.2. I'm going to activate it. And we're also going to do neighbor 2.2.2. And we're going to send community extended. Okay, look. Oop. So we do a show IP BGP neighbor. And we see the all important state is established. That's what you want. You don't want active, you want established. So let's go to, um, in fact, we'll go into our And we'll do router OSPF 2 and we'll do VRF blue. And what we want to do is to redistribute BGP 150 subnets. And we're going to go into router OSPF 3 VRF red. Do the same thing, redistribute. Oh, oh, not OSPF, BGP, 150 subnets. Now let's move over to number seven. And we're going to do conf t, router, OSPF2, VRF, 
blue, we distribute BGP 150 subnets and router OSPF 3 BRF red, we distribute BGP 150 subnets. So that's us done it from OSPF point of view. Let's go into BGP and do the same thing. Router BGP 150. What do address family IPv4 BRF? So it's going to be VRF blue. And what we're going to do is to redistribute uh, OSPF number two, and it's VRF blue. And we're also going to do the same thing here. So we'll do oh, router BGP. I could write out that. I don't know why I did that. Oh, just check if I've done that right. That's fine. Address family IPv4. The VRF red. And we are going to redistribute OSPF3. BRF red. That's that. Now let's move over to number two and we shall do pretty much the same thing. Oh. Router BGP. In fact, I did a redistributed the OSPF one done it so already. Just BGP from this side. And we'll do address family IP V4. And we're going to do VRF blue. And we're going to redistribute OSPF to VRF blue. And we are going to do router OSPF, or not router OSPF, router BGP 150. And we're going to do address family IPv4 VRF red. We're going to redistribute. OSPF process ID 3 VRF red. Okay, doke. So, how does that affect things? Well, let's have a look and see. So, if we go into number one, we do a show IP route from the customer. We now see we have an inter area of all the eights. That's that customer's look back. Connectivity here, it sees nothing else, it sees none of the internal network, none of the the 10 network in here. Can we ping it though? Well, yes, we can. And again, from this site here, let's go to router 8 and we do enter, we do a show IP route. We can see all the ones of our site one from site two. So let's try to ping that. Let's ping all the ones. Success. Now let's go to router three and we should see all the nines of the loopback from root customer B's site two. So let's go to number three and we do a show IP root. We can see all the nines. Can we ping it? Yep. Similarly, if we go to number nine, we should see all the threes from its side. So you can see they're completely segmented. They're actually, they're using the core. The core's not having to worry about any of its roots being injected into it. And we'll ping the threes. Full connectivity. So how does it look from the point of view of the edge routers then. So let's go to number two. Show IP route. That's just got its internal core stuff going on here. The show IP route VRF blue. We've now got BGP running through here. And if we do show VRF red, we're now getting the nine down here from this point of view through BGP. It's actually learned from OSPF, redistributed into BGP, but it's learning it via BGP. 
and similarly if we go to number seven and we do show IP root again just the internal code here we do show IP root VRF blue we can see that we've got the one here via BGP which is here and show IP root VRF red we have all the threes here BGP learned now let's just take one of the core rules for example number five what does that see let's show IP root it has none of those addresses it's completely unaffected. Now I could advertise a new route. Let's say I'm going to cast site two is going to add a new loopback address and advertise it through this core, right through it, and it's going to propagate just to here. So let's go to number eight, and we'll add a new loopback, make a distinctive loopback, make it interface loopback. I don't know, seventy five. Obviously the loop back, the interface loop back doesn't need to match. I just do this just as a kind of format I've got. This could be an interface loop back two of the same address. And we'll make it a slash 32 mask. So now we also have, oh. We now have 75. You'll see from, because this is in VRF blue, if we go to this one here, it won't have it. So number three will not have that one, of course, which is this one, uh, this one here. It's going to be completely independent. Still got the same one, just sees the same thing. But if we go to site one, which is number one, it's going to see this new root. So it's, does it does its show IP root. And, oh, why is that not popped up yet? That should have propagated through. Uh, number site two. Where are we? That's number eight, isn't it? Um, oh, I need to actually advertise it in OSPF. <laughs> I just popped it on the actual thing. <laughs> I just put it on the, the interface. I need to actually advertise it, John, for God's sake. area zero so that's that now so I'll do the same demonstration <laughs> let's go to number three first to show that it's not there again not there and let's go to number one and there it's there 75 so this route was this site was essentially able to dynamically advertise this route through this core, the core is completely unaffected. Just grab this router here, number six. You'll see it doesn't have it at all. So enable show IP root. Doesn't have it. None of these routers have it. Yeah, over here, we can dynamically advertise it to this one here, and we have full reachability. So we can we actually ping it from this site. 75, 75, 75, 75. Yep. And also, if we trace to it, That's that router here, number two, 1.1. Now it's going through the core network right through. And you notice all it does is pop out at the edge. You see that? The entire 10 network is mixed out. It's went from, oh, don't want it to snap open. Well, and yet it does. <laughs> it's went from, this is one seven. 172.16.1.2 it's went to 1.1 .1 here 
Now it's went through all these 10 networks, right through them all, but it's not traced through it because we're not, it's been hidden. All the router sees is the edge. It goes to this one here, which is 192.168.1.1 and to the target of 192.168.1.2, that one there, to get to its loopback. So the entire network and the MPLS code is hidden. It is completely stable. The routes are not injected into it, even though the, the routes are injected through it. We have two separate instances of routing tables for each customer, which are completely segmented and separate, even though they've got the same IP address and there's no overlap. So essentially, that is the purpose of this type of configuration. And whilst it might seem kind of difficult at first, all the kind of redistribution and um, VPN V4s and IPv4 s and address families, with a little bit of practice, you actually it starts making more and more sense. So if this is the first time seeing it, don't get discouraged. It's just a question of familiarity. The more you do it, the more you get used to it. And that's it. So I think that'll be the end of the video. And well, yep, that's the end of it. And I'll see you guys soon. Thanks very much.